afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another episode of In the Van with James. It's very good to see you people after all this time, even though I'm not technically seeing you. But, you know, beauty is a one-way street, and I believe that you guys are perhaps seeing me perhaps if you have eyes to see. Listen, I'm back and it's for real. And we have a beautiful springy, summery day here in beautiful Mission, British Columbia. That's where we're welcome. And today we're going to be talking about cleaning the laser. Now nobody likes to talk about cleaning, let's face it, but everybody likes to ask questions about it. And so I think that maybe today I'm going to answer, pre-answer, a bunch of questions for you guys. So why don't we get started on this little journey I like to call cleaning the laser. So the first thing we need to remember about cleaning the laser is that let's not make it dirty in the first place. How do we prevent the laser from getting dirty? I mean, we've all had the black sooty bits or the the melted plastic on the grid but the rest of the laser it really doesn't have to get that dirty and the number one thing that I tell everybody I know is that what you have to do is get yourself a great exhaust system now whether this is a quattro exhaust or an Atmos exhaust or whether this is a a dust collector fan you have to have the correct amount of CFM and especially the pressure that is required to keep this machine very clean. Now we have these published in all sorts of places, but the best place to go is to ask your local tech or even your local sales guy, if you can get a hold of them, to help you out with what this proper pressure is. Now, once you have the right pressure and the right CFM, you're going to notice that the smoke that is made from the laser isn't swirling around the laser it's being pulled directly back or directly down if you have a vacuum table into the the extraction system so the first thing is to get that dust directly out of the laser without passing go we don't want it going around the machine because the minute it goes around the machine a lot of this smoke is actually nebulized sort of liquid resin um, or liquid plastic that's floating around those little liquid droplets uh, are, are basically going to stick to everything and that starts to get your machine very dirty. And so if you have the correct kind of exhaust system, that smoke is not going to get uh, into your machine as easy. Of course, that's not going to solve all problems and that's why I'm making this video today. All right, now the next part that we're going to deal with in cleaning the laser is the grid. It's the thing that I get called on most often. Now, the, before I tell you how to clean the grid, I'm gonna tell you the grid is a replaceable product. It's a consumable. We expect that you're going to go through grids, uh, not, mm, not too often, but often enough that when you get a fresh grid, it feels great. It's kind of like getting new carpet in your house. You've been living with that same carpet for the long time, and now, You've got new stuff and it feels great. Same as your laser grid. If you get rid of the old laser grid or maybe just keep it for your dirtiest of projects and then get a brand new grid and, and keep it nice for you know when you're doing the cleaner projects, that's a great way to go. But if you do need to clean your grid, there's a, there's a few little tips and tricks that, uh, that we use. And one by uh, my fearless leader, Mel Jacinto out of Calgary uh, told me that uh, he takes his grid to the um, the car wash and he sprays a little bit of low pressure the uh, the tire cleaner on it washes his car when when he's done another low pressure rinse uh, on the grid and uh, he gets that thing nice and clean now you gotta know there's basically two things that can get on your grid there is wood paper um, kind of resin so this is wood resin it's sticky um, and it really sticks hard to your grid now wood uh, wood resin and paper resin 
generally don't have a lot of glue in them. So we don't clean it with things like acetone or solvents. We clean it with things like uh, soap, like dish soap. I love to use a high concentration dish soap rinse for mine. I like to dip my grid in a, in a, uh, a bathtub or some kind of a, a tub that's filled with a, a high concentration of dish soap. Now the, the dish soap breaks down the wood resin and then I rinse afterwards and it gets pretty clean. It's not perfect. Uh, if you're using plastics uh, and other kinds of sort of man-made materials, um, these are going to need solvents to clean. Now be careful with solvents, of course, uh, besides the fact that you know some solvents can be quite toxic or, or hard to get rid of. Uh, you know, basic solvents like acetone or toluene um, can really do a great job of cleaning it, but careful not to put your grid in the solvents for too, too long because a lot of the grids that we have are actually anodized aluminum. And so anodized aluminum can uh, kind of work adversely with some solvents. So just be careful there. Uh, spray the solvent on with, with some kind of a spray. Make sure you wear a respirator and then uh, wash it off with low pressure water. Uh, that's a good way of cleaning the, the grid. But really, when your grid gets really, really bad and, and it, you just can't seem to get it clean, that's the time to replace your grid. Now, another thing I see when I'm talking to people and I'm going around seeing uh, all the folks out there is that there's some people out there who have very dirty laser beds. Now we're talking um, underneath the grid. So on a Speedy 300, this is your, your steel ferromagnetic table. On a, a 360 or 400, this is your anodized aluminum bed underneath the grid. Now, um, some people don't realize, but you can lift those grids off uh, and clean the, the bed. So what I want you guys to do is, is next time you're at your laser, take a look. Is, is the bottom of your laser bed really dirty? If, it's, if you've been cutting mostly wood, use high concentration of dish soap. If you're cutting uh, plastics, use, use a solvent and get that bed nice and clean. And make sure this is a, a regular thing. Um, you know, once or twice a week, once a week if, you don't, if you're not that busy with it, but make sure that bed's nice and clean. Now, cleaning a lens, this is where um, our techs and, and the, the people who are training you um, should really give you a, a great training on this. And also there are countless videos on how to clean a lens. I don't really need to go into detail on how to clean your lens. Um, look it up. It's on our YouTube site, how to, how to clean a lens. Um, this is the lifeblood of your machine. Um, if your lens breaks, it's because you didn't clean it. I'm so sorry or you didn't take steps in preventing it, i.e. you didn't have a good enough exhaust to not get your uh, lens dirty in, in the first place. Um, and so it's the one part, it's one of the parts that you really have the power to keep clean or to make dirty. And if it's dirty, the, the part is gone. Um, and then you, you, you have to re replace it. And uh, I know there's people out there who are, who are you know, uh, might wanna try putting uh, third party lenses, like a, a Chinese made lens or something in, in there. And I might warn you against that, is that not all lenses are the same. They are not. Um, and if you get a bad one, it's like, you know, driving around a Ferrari with, you know, uh, the cheapest tires possible on it. You're just gonna, you know, slide around the road with it. So be careful. Um, buy Trotec lenses. They don't cost too much, and uh, they definitely are gonna give you a like new effect on your your machine. Don't uh, don't sell yourself short by saving a couple of dollars on that. But clean your lens. Clean your lens. We make it very easy to check your lens. We want you to check your lens. We want you to clean your lens. So it's important to continue to, to clean that thing. Once a day, twice, twice a day. Check it after every job. It only takes 10 seconds. This is a really important thing because I see too many people um, not checking their, their lenses and it's a, it's a needless, needless waste. Now, you know, you may have heard, oh, you don't need any maintenance on these machines. I think that's taken perhaps out of context. I, I've heard some people say that, but really, if you're in a dusty environment, if around the laser is, is woodworking equipment or you know metalworking equipment, things that are going to make dust, 
the laser is going to be pulling air from the outside into the cabinet. And because we have this impact technology that, that pulls air from the sensitive motion system into the you know dirty working air area to try to create a positive airflow so your dust doesn't get at your uh, you know your uh, workings your inner workings your motion system what we do is we want you to have a dust free environment because then you'd be bringing that dust from your outside world into the sides now if you do have a, a dusty environment I urge you to uh, call your tech and ask how to take the panels off and what to check for inside and what to clean. You basically want to keep those all those insides clean. And if you are doing this, please, people, unplug the machine first. Uh, we don't want any accidents. So you can take that, take those panels off, clean the inside of the machine. There's some mirrors on the inside, on the side panels that you can clean as as well. Um, you know. Next time you're calling your tech for a, a, a preventative maintenance, maybe have them show you how to clean those, those in, inside mirrors. It's really important there too. Now cleaning the outside of the machine is a great task to do. Um, nobody likes a, a nasty, dirty machine, especially if you have employees, um, you know, they love, you know, they, you should urge them, of course, to keep their working area clean. But, you know, keeping your machine clean uh, is great for, for value down the road if you should want to upgrade. Uh, it's also great because, you know, you want to look good when your customers come in. So, I mean, normally the, the powder coating metal of that, I just use a, 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 a light dish soap. Um, sometimes I even oil it with a little WD-40 to create a little bit of a luster. But, you know, that's me in a showroom environment. Um, the control panel of, of the, the laser, you know, don't use any heavy solvents on. Uh, you you want to keep that control panel clear of, of solvents and things like that. Uh, the other thing that you want to do is with the, the lid, don't use Windex and don't, don't use paper on it. It's an acrylic product. Use a nice soft microfiber cloth and pick up some, some Novus. We sell, the, uh, at least in Canada here, we sell uh, Novus uh, ac acrylic plastic cleaner and this is a non-scratch plastic cleaner and it's going to keep your uh, your lens like your lid I guess dust free and it's going to keep it clean uh, there's a novice scratch remover if you notice that your lens is getting or your lid is getting a little bit of, of scratch on it we have a, a novice plastic polish that you can polish that back to almost new quality and so keep that thing clean because you're looking through it all day long Keep the underside clean as well because that's you know that that gets dirt on it you want to be able to see through the uh, the lid all the time so keep your your outside clean it'll 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 look nice in the end now one thing they don't always tell you and if you read the manual you would you would definitely uh, uh, have have read this but uh, if you have a Speedy 100 or a Speedy 300, and even the other machines too, but especially the Speedy 100 and 300 where the tubes, laser tubes are exposed out the back, or at least the, the case from the laser tube is exposed out, out the back. Now there are, there's a cleaning fan or a, a cooling fan attached to these tubes, and there's metal fins uh, that the cooling fan is drawing air into. Now, especially if you have a dusty environment, but this isn't, it doesn't hurt to do even if you don't, is take a little bit of compressed air, light compressed air, and blow through the fans of your laser tube, uh, or the fins of your laser tube, I should say, just to get dust out. Because if dust gathers in there too much, then your laser tube isn't truly cooling the way it, it should. And a nice cool laser tube, like or at least a nice 20 degree laser tube, is ideal for the longevity of your tube. Temperature definitely plays a, a big part in longevity of a laser tube. So make sure you keep those fins nice and clean too. Now let's talk about some things that you probably shouldn't clean. Uh, we should let the experts clean. Um, one of these things is maybe uh, uh, deep down uh, in the, uh, the, the, the lead screws that lift the, the Z-axis table up. Um, if you're trained on how to do that, sure, go ahead. But um, it's probably best if you let our experts clean those. The power supply. Now the power supply can get full of dust and dirt too, but you really should let the experts touch those those things. They're trained on how to how to uh, adjust those, but you do need to 
clean those every now and then too. It's it, it really, especially if you're in a dusty environment. Um, I've seen some uh, power supplies that had maybe two cups of, of wood dust in it, and uh, it's not it's not pretty because um, you know who who knows what can happen there. I just want you to keep you know everything nice and safe and just do these things once in a while. Um, the the other thing is is to get you know open up open up panels that don't look like they're user accessible. Don't do that. Let our experts do that. So this is the the back of the laser, uh, like on a speedy 300 and 100. There's some some panels back there that that uh, house the aperture of the laser. We don't want you fooling around with with that stuff if you're not trained to do it. Um, let let our our guys do that. Uh, which actually brings me to a point, um, get a preventative maintenance now. If you've never had one, or if you don't know what I'm talking about, you should probably go to mytrotech.ca and get a hold of one of our techs through that and have them come out and just do kind of a, a one, two, three check on your, your machine. Uh, if you live in a very far outlying area, maybe you're up north in Whitehorse or something like this, um, and you don't want to fly one of our techs up there, um, you can arrange for uh, a, a one on one um, training session with them to, uh, to service those, those parts and they can, they can hold your hand virtually as you do that. Um, but it, it definitely is a really good idea to get a preventative maintenance on, on your machine. It just extends your longevity. The, the small cost of a preventative maintenance to have someone come out is much less than, than you know, paying for a, a bearing or something that, that, that might go wrong uh, because uh, you didn't see you know, a, a, a product that was about to fail. Whereas our tech you know, could see something that, that might be going wrong. So yeah, book that book that today, and uh, they'll definitely come out. All right, guys, it's really great to be back in the saddle with you guys again. I'm so glad to be back out on the road in BC here uh, on a nice sunny day. It just feels great. Um, I look forward to talking with you guys some more very very soon. Uh, I've missed you all, of course, and uh, I really want to say. If you love what's going on here, I want you to, you know, like and subscribe, like and subscribe. <laughs> and especially put your comments below because I love answering questions. Um, uh, our marketing department passes the questions off to me and I, I, I always have a chance to sit down and chit chat about um, about your issues. And maybe if it's, if it's a really good one, we can make a video of it and uh, you can get your question explained on the road. So for now, guys, take care. See you next time.